Insects are the most successful group of life forms on land. Over a million have been discovered and named, and there are estimates there could be up to 30 million different species. But there is one big, glaring mystery. Why aren't there any insects in the ocean? Oceans cover 70% of the planet and are full of arthropods, especially crustaceans. Insects evolved on land from crustaceans, but quickly figured out how to recolonize lakes and rivers. It's estimated that 3% of all insect species are associated with the water. Why didn't they ever make it to the deep sea with their lobster cousins? Of the over 1 million insects known, about 25,000 insects are associated with saline environments. Pretty much all of them require land for part of their life cycle, either for mating, laying eggs, or larval development. Most of these insects are associated with estuaries, tidal pools, beaches, ocean cliffs, and the like. Some even cruise along the coastline of islands and swim amongst their mangroves. None, however, live in the deep ocean. Only one group even lives on the open ocean at all. That insect is the genus Halobates. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. The Halobates are a type of true bug, the hemipterans, and they belong to the family Gerardi. And the Gerardi are something that you might be familiar with if you've ever spent summers along a lake or uh, grew up with ponds and rivers around. These are the water striders. Sometimes they look like giant mosquitoes, but they're actually true bugs. Uh, and they are predatory, so they're not going to bother you too much. And they skate on the surface of... Uh, bodies of water, usually hunting for things that are, uh, you know, have, that have fallen onto the surface. Halobates is a type of Jared that has evolved specifically for life on the ocean. And, and this, you can see two Halobates here, one and two. They're a little different from the traditional Jared, which you see here. Uh, the traditional freshwater Jared generally has a kind of a long body, uh, and they all, all species of them, have these very, very large legs, which they use to stand on the water and take advantage of the surface pressure of the water. The Halobates tend to be a lot smaller. They don't have such a long body. It's a much more compact body you, uh, that is useful for them uh, on the open ocean in order to deal with waves and currents and things like that. Uh, because unlike you freshwater Jareds, these guys deal with a lot more uh, of a dynamic system. The Halobates are relatively distinctive. Besides having this uh, dark, compact oval body, they are also wingless. So while they are on the open ocean, uh, which they don't need to return to land for anything, they can't fly from the surface, although they can jump, which is a pretty neat trick, considering that they're standing on water. They're found all around the world, and they are only primarily limited by water temperature. So this is a map of the Halobates distribution. Uh, there are five species worldwide that are known to live on the open ocean. And you can kind of see that a lot of them have this overlapping range in the Pacific. Uh, and there's quite a bit uh, kind of leading into the Indian Ocean, although they are known from other areas as well. So they're just not able to live on the super cold parts uh, of the oceans. But otherwise... At any point, if you're on a ship out in the open ocean, you could stumble across these Halobates species. You are not likely to notice them, unfortunately, because they are very small. Uh, the, the adults are usually only a couple millimeters, like around five millimeters. So from the deck of a ship, you're not likely to see them on the surface. But occasionally, you will find a mass of them because they do tend to hang out together quite a bit on the open ocean. How they find each other is a complete mystery, but sometimes you'll find a big ball of them uh, kind of communally hanging out on the surface of the ocean. They lay their eggs on any sort of floating debris, and this can be naturally occurring, you know, leaves or, or stems or whatever, or human garbage like floating milk jugs or that garbage island out in the Pacific. They, they'll lay all their eggs on this floating debris, 
and then the eggs will develop th uh, after hatching in through five nymphal stages until they reach adulthood. And this can take quite a bit of time depending on the temperature of the water. They are predators. They feed on any sort of small things that they can catch on their surface, uh, and they suck the fluids out of those uh, little creatures. They tend to mass together uh, and hunt together and things like that. Sometimes uh, in these masses, the adults will cannibalize the nymphs, unfortunately, for those nymphs. Uh, but that's how it goes when you're in the middle of the open ocean. The cool thing about these guys is they are super hydrophobic. And this is an interesting uh, evolution for them in how they deal with uh, being on the ocean. Because they are constantly being bombarded by rain and ocean spray and waves and things like that, there are serious issues about staying on the surface of the water. They have to stay on the surface for whatever reason. They really cannot survive in the actual water of the ocean. So they are covered in dense wax and tons of very fine hydrophobic hairs, which they constantly groom to make sure that they are uh, completely covered in this wax so that they will float. And if they are accidentally submerged, they will uh, get back to the surface relatively rapidly. Most of the freshwater insects, and the Jareds are in, uh, included in this, have the ability to form something called a plastron. And a plastron is a structure that, or it is a, a structure and a bubble, uh, and it is a physical gill. And what that means is that uh, when it, most of the time with these aquatic insects, they frequently don't have uh, physiological gills. What they do is they have some sort of structure on them which will form a bubble if they're ever forced underwater, and then they can just breathe the bubble. And these guys have that as well. They have little ridges, uh, which they, uh, those ridges then create air bubbles, and they can breathe those air bubbles until they can get back to the surface. What's weird about these guys is that we don't actually know how they manage to navigate on the water being so hydrophobic. Theoretically, they just kind of slide across the water, and because they repel the water so well on their legs here, they shouldn't really be able to stop. They must have some sort of stopping mechanism. Freshwater Jareds have a stopping mechanism. They have these little hairs that they can use, but these guys are much more hydrophobic than their freshwater cousins. So we don't really know how they stop. We don't know how they navigate. We do know that they actively move. They're not just at the, the mercy of the tides, as it were, but they do get around. They go, uh, they can navigate. They can intentionally travel in directions, but there's just a lot that's not known about these guys. But overall, they're the only exception to this rule of insects living on or in the open ocean. Hypotheses on the difficulty of insects colonizing the ocean differ. Some think that the ocean niches are just too full uh, for insects to exploit. Too much competition from things like the crustaceans and other invertebrates. But personally, I don't particularly buy that. Insects are extremely good at rapidly taking advantage of resources in any environment. Um, in fresh water, there are crustaceans that don't seem to be able to keep the insects out. So that doesn't seem to be an issue in things like rivers and, la uh, rivers and lakes. So why is, why is it such an issue in the ocean? I don't know. And on top of that, uh, the insects have survived multiple major extinction events, which decimated the oceans. Uh, so during those periods, there should have been open niches in the ocean. Why didn't in, any insects evolve to fill them? Others think that this gap of insect life forms in the ocean is caused by difficulties in adjusting land physiology, to problems of the of living in a marine environment, specifically marine respiration, marine osmotic regulation, marine pressure regulation, and things like that, have uh, prevented these insects from invading seawater environments uh, on a full time basis. Of the, like I've said at the beginning, there are insects that inhabit saline and partially marine environments, but they don't do it for their complete life cycle. They can't. Uh, reproduce usually in the ocean. But this hasn't prevented them from invading freshwater environments. Uh, and they're actually very, very successful in the freshwater environments. So why is this? It's it's still a mystery. 
And on top of that, other groups managed to make this transition. Mammals in particular, which reproduce much more slowly, managed to transition from land into the ocean uh, fairly successfully. So who knows why this mystery exists? It's likely a combo of factors. Uh, but I did want to talk about this and bring it up because it is just so interesting. I'll talk to you guys later.